welcome back to another EXP podcast. I'm joined once again by Kem and Luan, my co-hosts. Hey there. Hey. And this week we have with us Jacob and Javier to discuss the business aspects of art. So if I can get Jacob to introduce himself first. Hey everyone, uh, Jacob Norris. Um, I'm currently lead environment artist at NVIDIA and maybe some of you know me by Pure Polygons, which I go by online sometimes. And Javier. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, my name is Javier Perez, and I'm currently a senior material artist at PlayStation's Visual Arts Service Group. Um, you guys might be familiar with some of my work as I go by Mesh Modeler on everything. Very nice. So this week, we wanted to talk about some of the aspects of being a 3D environment artist that aren't directly tied to the art, but are still really important for an individual in order to kind of get themselves a job or to get through that kind of process um so the first thing that we kind of wanted to discuss was how you go about marketing yourself as an artist so you could be sitting at home making some kick-ass work but how do you kind of get that out there and get yourself noticed who's going yeah. first <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good question, yeah. by the way so no yeah. pressure <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, how do you become famous, or is it more that, uh, like, <laughs> more? How do you even just present yourself? Wrong ways to promote yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think honestly, one of the biggest things is really just posting your work in the first place. I know a lot of people either they're kind of like nervous sometimes, or or uh, maybe they feel like the project's not not finished, and so they don't want to share it until it's like one hundred percent done. But even even just sharing your work in like discords and getting feedback, just starting to get yourself out there is is huge. Because um, I I had this talk with someone else previously, but like just uh, so many people are, are incredible artists that you never even know about just because they're they're not sharing their work uh, either either they're nervous or they just don't feel like they have to or just for whatever reason. Sometimes, um, yeah, I feel like just sharing it is one of the first steps and that'll help a lot. So would you share even if you don't want feedback or anything and just like, hey, I'm working on this? Yeah, I mean, it's not that you want to share everything, right? Because we don't want to see, we don't want to see all the work. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, like the, the uncomfortable part that comes with like uh sharing i guess a part of yourself because that's that's a lot of what the artwork is is like you know maybe we decided to do this piece because it was really interesting to us either visually or emotionally or something like that so every time we're sharing something maybe it's like like when you guys are sharing a work is a lot of the work did you feel it's very personal to you like um yeah sometimes I, if, if it's if it's a paid job not so not as much but yeah there's still that personal attachment yeah like my personal work is really entirely just it comes from a place that i just want to make some some art that's interesting to me um less from a place just of like learning like oh i'm gonna bake some trims to learn trims whatever it's more of like a, an emotion or a feeling that i kind of just want to invoke um which tends to kind of push itself more towards uh, not caring so much about doing game art and just trying to make a, a piece that sort of speaks that sort of feeling, right? Um, so, yeah, I think in in my case, that's very much how how it works for me. Is there is there one between the two that you're more or less comfortable sharing? Like when you do a personal piece compared to something that somebody told you to make? Like, uh, is, there any, is there any more or less... Uh, embarrassment or nervousness or whatever the word would be that like why you wouldn't or wouldn't want to share it mm. see for me um if it's uh if it's entirely a personal piece that i'm just trying to um to kind of convey a, a feeling or whatever um, i actually share to sort of see how people respond to it more than to like get feedback but there is a very very much a a sense uh, as I'm about to share is like, oh man, what if everybody kind of just like doesn't get it or like feels completely not how I intend them to kind of feel with this or what yeah. if they just don't like it, right? So there is 100% a sense of that, but I think I just, uh, I kind of try to look past that. Even even though I know I'm going to feel that, uh, I kind of just do it anyway 
just to get it out there. Yeah, like I don't know about you guys, but but sometimes if there's especially something I was working on for a while, and then I'll share it maybe just before I go to bed or like just when I wake up, and yeah. like I'm, I'm getting butterflies, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or, or Make maybe... sure you're asleep for the responses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like especially if I'm gonna post it right before bed, and then it's terrible because I'm I'm gonna wake up way before I should. And then immediately go and check. Like, did, did anybody see it? Like, did anybody like I've it? I've never done that before. I normally just yeah. publish it. Uh, I've, I've done that before. Like, you, you find that the different time zones start liking it. Like, I post it, I go to bed, and then, like, on my night side table, my phone is just blowing up with notifications. I'm like, I just, stay, <laughs> I just like, stay up, like, all night. Like, who's, who's looking at this right now? That's why you're always up at 2 a.m. whenever I message you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, just <laughs> He's like, I'm still awake. Yeah, I'm still awake. Uh. But, um, do you, like, because you guys are pretty far in your careers now, do you, do you post much work in progress anymore, or is it just always production titles, like, for example, The Last of Us 2 released, um, well, somewhat recently, and I... obviously you had a nice art dump, but do you still work in your personal time, or is it just professional yeah, work and that keeps I, you moving i would say that like for me personally like i do a lot of work outside of just my professional work um i think that that keeps me active because you know some people like hold off and just work on the professional work and you don't see them post anything for a really long time until their game hmm. shift or something like that so like what jacob was mentioning just posting all the time is i find it super important that way people will notice you like it, you just become people start noticing your name. If you're actively posting, they'll keep noticing the same name over and over again. Um, and just being able to post it everywhere. Um, like I not only do I post on art station, but at the same time I like tweet it out. I Instagram and then there's like, like 10 different discord groups I'm in. It's even, yeah. got, to, it's even, got, it's even got to the point where like I use like, um, third-party softwares that actually post on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook all at the same time. Like, oh wow, okay, yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. there's definitely there's definitely like things that an artist could do, or like just regular people can do to like push their content out to more people at once. Something else is like um, like Javier made a good point that. It, the, the more you're posting, the more you're just kind of in people's minds. And there's that aspect, too, that uh, not only posting your work, but then even just kind of interacting with people so that you're you're maybe one of the first people they're going to think of when they're looking for a new artist or, or someone to, to fill a position. Like, potentially, there's, uh, you know, however many other artists just as good as you or better than you or it's it's just the fact that you're kind of relevant at that time is the reason that they're thinking of you for that position when they're going to reach out to you. Yeah. So how, how do you guys feel about posting something that's just some exploratory work or some, uh, you know, technical exercises and stuff like that? Is there like a, a place you'd rather put that on that isn't like the front of your art station or do you not even care about sharing that kind of stuff? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I personally think that a lot of the stuff I do is like personal exercise, just pushing like what's possible, like that sci-fi hallway that I did, like, you know, that's, that's definitely not game ready. Like you couldn't necessarily do that inside of a game. Cause I like Tesla the, it's so much, but did you I don't share know, many like, like work in progress of that? Um, not just kind really. of, just kind of individual messages. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. just appears like i'll be browsing the station and then <laughs> yeah i always i always tell cam i'm like look out for something tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> it just dropped like i don't see yeah. any it's yeah. just like he's just hidden and then suddenly tons of artwork comes out so um yeah i mean i i show my like really close friends like jacob and like my other like coworkers and stuff like that but um i don't i don't post a lot of work in progress lately because I also kind of like that element of surprise almost, or like, you know, that people don't know about it, you know? Um, I, I don't know. I just like pe getting people shot, like almost like a shock value, you know, like you see it and then they never saw it before. Where as before, you know, sometimes you can post like works in progress and you kind of start seeing it kind of fully develop. And at one point, you know, you might think it's like fully finished or when they finally post the full thing, it's like, 
not much different than some of the works in progress that you were seeing earlier. It loses that but, impact, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. At the same time, I've, I've also seen quite often that it, it kind of gets people excited to like see where it's going to go next and you'll get people mm-hmm. jumping on kind of watching the art progress almost like a like a tv show like yeah. oh what's going to be the episode next week you know like yeah. <laughs> cliffhangers <laughs> and stuff yeah yeah exactly so it almost kind of gains a following or like more of a following yeah. than it would have if you had just done a big drop and maybe half the people or crunch in that week or the like some people are on vacation and so a bunch of people would miss it whereas instead as it's posting throughout the progression you're you're kind of getting like you're picking up people on a train as you're going by and they're all hopping on like oh this this is a pretty sick ride i'm like i'm gonna stay here for a while and see where this goes (laughs) (laughs) and do do you guys see different results so obviously like has it led to job opportunities like you just drop your sci-fi corridor uh javier and then everyone's flocking to your inbox like yeah already right yeah (laughs) i i use I use ArtStation's um, analytics quite a bit when I actually post, and you can see the graph just fucking really? skyrocket. Like it, whenever oh, I post, it, it, yeah, it just skyrockets up, and then it kind of slowly starts going down as the days progress, and it plateaus. And um, yeah, I mean, it definitely. I do have a bunch of people hit me up like when something like that gets posted, or um, the other thing is like uh, this one I did post a little bit of the breakdown but i when i just post screenshots and know like people still trying to figure out what it is that's when i start Mm -hmm. getting more messages asking like oh how'd you do this or like how did how did you go about doing this yada 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 um that's that's the other thing yeah definitely breakdowns of of the work as you're posting it those tend to garner a lot more attention as well Mm -hmm. Um, because then not only are you sharing oh look at this cool final piece i did but maybe I can help a couple other people to, to be able to get the same product at the end by following like, yeah. these steps or at least give them some ideas that if you try some of these, maybe you could get different results. Yeah, I've noticed that after I put an art piece out, it's it's a pretty high like following and likes. And then I almost get just about the same amount of likes by doing a breakdown because people are so interested in knowing exactly how I did it as opposed to just looking at the main shots. So. What would you say to the artist that, um, like, they've done a really nice piece, really cool final piece, but they really haven't done anything special in terms of, like, a technical breakdown? Like, it's a really simple workflow. There's really nothing crazy about how they got there in the end. Like, do you think they should still post uh, something or yeah, just at abs- least a little ab- blog post something? Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, to you, you might, because like, you know, the workflow, you know how it's being done to you. It might not be a big deal, but to someone else, they, it could totally be a brand new thing that they've never even heard of before. Yeah. Like, they like sometimes, anything. sometimes like people I see posts and they're talking like, like, um, about their breakdowns and they're like, um, how they did something. And to them, it sounds like, you know, it's pretty standard, like in the industry, but for me, like I could see something and I wouldn't even know what, what it was. So and, and uh, I anything, think it all, oh, sorry, go on. Uh, and I think um, just with the content that you have on your art station, it also like it gives you the ability to have just more pieces of artwork on on your actual portfolio because not only do you have the main uh, piece, but you also have the breakdown to go with it. So I guess it also just forms the, the break- conversation oh, no. as well, right? Even if it's uh, like I said, like the artist thinks it's nothing special or whatever, it at least gets a conversation going. Yeah, yeah, I definitely. Suppose, yeah, more definitely. conversational piece, and then and then yeah, it sparks discussion about workflows, and yeah. maybe like someone else will give you an idea based off of that, yeah. um, or even if it's super similar to someone else's workflow, even if there's just one little difference that makes you go, oh wow, I never thought of that, or mm-hmm. I never thought of trying that, it can help a ton. There's also so, been in- there's also been instances where I feel like I I have come across a breakdown like before I even saw the main piece, like the breakdown got more attention than the actual art piece, art piece itself. Yeah. So I think it gives you doing a breakdown gives you the opportunity to like almost like reshow it again. Um, so it gives you like more views and just gets more eyes on it that uh, people who didn't originally see the original post that you did. So, so would you say it's something that needs to come in like, uh, I don't know, a month after 
you finish yeah, it. Yeah, a month, uh, maybe like two weeks, however you want to break it down, really, if there's enough interest on people wanting to see it. Yeah, uh, like I've even just launched them at the same time before. Um, like well, <laughs> one, something I, I, I always mentioned because I just thought it was kind of interesting was like the, the modular building set trim sheet I had created a long time ago. Personally, I felt that the modular building set was not the best piece of artwork, but it always got a ton of attention just because of the breakdown, uh, the modular workflow, like the, the trim sheet idea. And so that, that really helped push the piece, even if maybe the quality of the piece itself wasn't as high. It still has like, I still get people messaging me even today on something I posted like six years ago because you they're like, beat oh, me yeah. to it, man. I was going <laughs> to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, like it's so popular like it's what six years old seven years old I guess now it and came it's still at a time different. where there wasn't much outlet to show that kind of stuff right yeah there's, yeah there's still stuff like back when i was in college from the poly count days that i still look back to and like reference sometimes like yeah. there's just stuff hasn't really changed much and it's it's crazy <laughs> Because no matter how good the technology gets, like some of these workflows are, are going to be relevant for such a long time just because of how quick the, they'll, they'll speed up like your process. Or I remember, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the sci-fi building that uh, Torfric created where he did oh, yeah. Like, yeah, a yeah. single texture and made the whole yeah, environment. I remember that. Like that Classic. thing was one of the coolest, <laughs> one of the coolest environments. So what makes so, the like what makes a good breakdown then? Because obviously yours is referenced still to this day. Javier's got a bunch of polycount um, threads that he says he still falls back to. Like, like is there something special about those or the way they're delivered that makes them so so useful? Like that person still getting um, traffic to their profile. Yeah, I mean, I think I think tutorials are great and breakdowns are great, but I think when people actually talk about like their, um, I guess they're like the way they were thinking about it almost like it, it, it tends to like last longer as far as like people referencing it. It's not just something you follow like A, B, C, or D. It's almost like the person talks about their, their mindset when they were creating this piece or like the way they were thinking about it, which I think has a, like a longer lasting impression on s certain things. Yeah, like not only what inspired you, but the process behind the creation and like each step of why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, I think that's more important than just coming out with a breakdown like, oh, one, two, and three, these are the steps to do it. It's more <laughs> like, it's like more like, you know, start thinking about why you made these, these decisions and stuff like that. What if um, you are looking at a potential person that you're hiring and you're looking at a portfolio? And they put a breakdown up, but it's mostly like um, it's not the most technically efficient or the best way to do something, but they're aware of it and they kind of just wanted to do things this way because, I don't know, it wielded a certain result or they felt like they didn't need to go too in-depth into making something super efficient. Do you think that affects uh, how they might be seen uh, as for recruitment? or? Uh, I think it's it's still related to like what what Javier was saying uh, before in, in the sense of like when, when you're putting these together and, and you're sharing your ideas, maybe to some people it's just kind of standard or, or whatever, but there's still plenty of people that it's, it's totally new. And so don't be, don't be nervous posting and sharing your workflow thinking that like, Oh, this is going to be totally lame and everybody does this already. Uh, that even just, just sharing that to begin with, especially when looking for people, I think, it's it's good to show employers that if they're going to hire you and if you come up with a workflow while you're working for them, you're going to be able to present it well to the rest of the team to mm -hmm. show them like, uh, yeah, faster workflows and, and to help kind of lift the team up as a whole and not just yourself that you're already willing to share those things. For sure. So I find that to be really helpful. Yeah, um, I would say on the other end of that aspect there could be instances that where like they do a breakdown and you just look at it and you're like why did they do it like this so <laughs> there could be <laughs> some sort of like repercussions maybe like you know depending on who looks at it i could see that being an issue maybe um if like 
it might be like a topic that, you know, you put up your breakdown and you're wondering what, what was their thought process. So that could be a topic of discussion when you end up interviewing the person like, you know, hey, I saw your breakdown. I was wondering why you kind of chose to make it like this. So I think just um, being prepared to like back up why you did certain things and stuff like that can be beneficial. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like you were saying, share, uh, share the reason behind your process and why you do the things you do, because then otherwise, if, if you don't have an answer for that, then you're just yeah, exactly. <laughs> going through the motions. Yeah. Like, so why did you do this? I don't know. I read it. Somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I followed another tutorial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's good to understand for sure. What about, okay. So yeah, in, in interviews, like I, I think that's something that, they don't really prepare you for coming out of college. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, like, so when I was in college, we had like mock interviews where like yeah. people came from the industry and like interviewed us. And yeah, I would say they were okay. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, but yeah, they were it, okay. Like, yeah, you mean like, people interviewing you, like, yeah, the no, questions I, weren't I, that good. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, it was like I didn't really feel like I came out out of it like with something like like oh that was i almost wanted it, it wasn't as intimidating as you know regular interviews are i don't know yeah. um, ha, okay have you have you guys seen that when you go into interviews is it different at each studio like are is it always different questions or do you kind of have like well, a, a common set that you've seen quite often when you go through the interview process oh man it's tough um i personally i feel like it's different every time I feel like it's different every time. Sometimes I go in and it's like, it's like almost like I'm getting quizzed and other times it's like I'm out at lunch with some friends. I guess it all depends on like where you are in the interview process. Um, Cause sometimes it's all about meeting the team. Other times it's like a meeting with like the lead artist and art director. And those guys are the ones who are asking the questions mostly. Hmm. Um, it, it all, it all varies because I feel like each studio has different workflows different ideologies so like you know not every studio might have the same questions and workflows have any of you guys yeah. like been the interviewer very often a few yeah. times <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that kind of, i feel like that kind of works that kind of starts working in your favor because in my in my experience like start when you start asking more questions than they are you find a you kind of feel like it's going well almost like uh, that's how I feel, at least. <laughs> oh, I yeah, didn't mean like putting up on him. Like, <laughs> I guess uh, I, see what, I see what you're talking about. I see what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interview like, actually, let me ask you a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because at the end, usually, oh, like, do you got? Do you have any questions for us? And like, I end up like giving way more questions to them than they originally gave to me. You know, so yeah, but that's good. Cool. Yeah, That's an really interesting good, topic, though, when you inevitably always fall into the "so do you get, have any questions for us" situation. Yeah. Right? Like, what do you, what yeah. do you think are some uh, important questions that people should ask in that situation that isn't specific to all like workflow related or whatever? Um, I usually like my main like it's funny because like every um, interview that I've been in, I kind of have like a little cheat sheet that I've always had with me and I add more and more questions as like I progress through my career of like new things that I've learned at certain studios but the main things are like for me are like why did why did you guys personally like join the the certain studio that I'm being interviewed at or what's like a day-to-day -day for you like mm -hmm. stuff like that do you think they're always honest with their like you ask someone like what do you think of the company here like why are you here is it always honest or are they just it's tough you it's yeah. tough because they That's want to like, person. yeah, they definitely want to sell you on the studio. You know, they definitely want to hire you. Um, but you know, I mean, you could always just, they, they might like say stuff off the record. I don't know. It's, I guess it's how comfortable they are talking to you. Yeah. Like something I, I always tended to ask was, uh, what's one of the things you like most about working here and then what's something if you could change, uh, that you don't like as much about oh, working That's here. a good one just so you can kind That's of get some input, inside perspective. And um, I know like people have asked me that before and I'll give them as honest of an answer as I can while still like, you know, not, not turning them away or 
hopefully it's not such a bad response mm-hmm. that you would you would turn them away then why are you working there <laughs> but, yeah uh, as uh, as an interviewer i always like that's one question that always stumps people like um for example like i always ask them have you played our games and then i say like oh if there's one thing you could change in our game like what would it be and that's the one that always like stumps people like because they don't really think about like because they just think like oh it's 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 released it's so good like i wouldn't change anything you know but do you think <laughs> that they're also trying not to uh like hurt not by mouth it, but hurt yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly um no, just, no, just, I, mean, I, I just want honest questions like i i just like i just want honesty i guess like because yeah. e- every you know everything can be can be better bettered like I've, I've personally even found uh, so so my very first job ever like I actually came in firing at them <laughs> just to see how <laughs> like like I, I was like uh, in the interview for Insomniac and and I said actually on res- on resistance um, I felt there was a couple of things you guys could have done better <laughs> like, <laughs> oh really <laughs> <laughs> like turn it around on Savage. please they, tell they me actually, what I dropped <laughs> how did that go did they actually get- appreciated it like oh, like cool. so so not only do you just, it's not like you just shit on them or something. <laughs> of course. Uh, like so, so you said, oh, there's a couple things I really like about it. But when you also go through the game and you're looking at it artistically, and you can point a couple things out to them that you felt this could have been better for this reason, or this could have been better for this reason. Yeah. Also, make sure you have a reason why you're saying those things. Don't just say like, oh yeah, that looked like shit. And they're like, why? I've, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've no that's reason. happened to me too. Where like they actually do agree. They're like, oh yeah, we actually did try changing that or like that was something we were you know fighting with the art director or something like that so there could be things that you mentioned that they have already thought about or something like that so yeah and it it just like lets them know that you're thinking about these things while you're playing the game and i think it speaks really well to you as an artist and and your character that you're confident enough to come in there and like talk about that to them but just yeah definitely make sure there's a reason and don't just say things because otherwise like they're like actually that was like one of our like highest acclaimed parts of the map or it was <laughs> you know <laughs> you look bad really like it <laughs> yeah i guess that's classic uh, feedback uh, response right never just say something's just bad for whatever reason just give real critique right yeah, yeah. constructive yeah. criticism either way but i think that's that's great like that uh, that could be i think one of the best advices to give is just be be confident have a reason for why you're saying what you're saying and then talking about yeah the game or the company or something that you like and something that you felt could have been better actually i'd appreciate that if someone came in and like during an interview and that happened so am i just just interview me dude and we can let's do a live interview right now the the guy that you're saying but no, I actually wanted to ask, um, cause a lot of these interview tips you guys are giving are the, the general, but I imagine as you get more senior into your careers and, um, you know, 10, 15 years, like does the interview process change at all for you guys? Like if you wanted to, to move yeah. a job, like are you much more comfortable, you just walk in oh. and like, Definitely. Do you do you still sweat and panic compared to like when back when I was like you know just my first job in the industry or like the first couple of jobs it was more like a bunch of pipeline stuff honestly like it was just like work, general workflow stuff but now like I think when you're a senior you have more of that credibility that okay this guy knows what he's doing and honestly like to me um, on site interviews to me are like more so like they just want to find out if you they just want to know if you're crazy or not you know they just want to, <laughs> they just want to see you in person and make sure you're like a normal human being and kind of get like just more so your sense of humor the type of person you are um that kind of stuff well what yeah, are some like, of the key senior questions then that you think should be asked by seniors sh- should be asked by seniors? yeah you mean um should be asked when you're the one going in for the interview or should be asked like that's when right you're if you're going people. in oh gotcha when you're um, going in okay i think i think one. at that point then it's also important like so similar things like what what do you like most about the studio and what don't you like because uh 
as as you're going forward in your career, you need to ask yourself what's important mm-hmm. to you at that point. Like, do you want to work on you know the best, most amazing game in the whole industry, and like, do you want to push the boundaries and work crazy hours? Or at that point in your career, are you looking for more R and D? Like, are you trying to see what's next and what's out there, and like start with new workflows and techniques? Um, or are you already done and you want to go and you know, work <laughs> work your nine to five? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or should you go make bread in Iceland? Or yeah. <laughs> 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 so lost. asking yourself what's in, what's important to you and knowing that going into the interview so that you can you can make sure that it's a good fit for you at the studio at that point. Yeah. So what kind of questions do you ask in in interviews Jacob? Like is there like a killer question you just catches everyone off guard? Oh, like uh if I'm interviewing someone to yeah. on board. Uh something something that's kind of funny just to see uh, <laughs> oh, that's no. like, to start. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Is is I'll ask people like what they could have as a superpower. Like, if you could have mm-hmm. any superpower, what superpower would you choose and why? And I think that's really interesting. It it kind of gives you a look into what like the person themselves a bit. Um, I remember someone wanted to be like invisible, and so you can kind of start to think, okay, maybe. They just want they, to get away with things. Yeah, they want to pretend they're not there or something. <laughs> uh, or like somebody else thought it would be cool that you get plugged in like the Matrix and you can just download the information, like whatever you want to learn, you just download it. That's, That's like a superpower. Some cr- well, what, crazy what about interviews. you? What's your superpower? What do you want? Yeah, I, I, I kind of found over time that maybe it's it's not good to have a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> you, have you seen Marvel movies or anything? It's great to have a superpower. Yeah. Because even, okay, so if you could learn anything you wanted <laughs> in an instant, eventually it would get boring to learn things, right? It's true. It's like, true. Yeah, it's true. Then you, don't, then you don't gain that satisfaction of all the work you put into it and all the time to know how to do that. Yeah, I would I would love that power for Houdini, though. And I know Javier's been learning oh, Houdini in the background. And oh, my God. <laughs> the curve is so steep. It's almost like cheat codes in a game, right? Like, as, once you start typing in the cheat codes for the first, like, week or the first however long, it's really fun, and then you're kind of bored. You're like, well, yeah. I, I can do everything now, so it's none of it's fun, you know? That's how I feel about modding, like, downloading skyrim and going oh let's try out these mods and you just put them on for like a minute and you're like okay whatever i'm done i always add too many and then i forget what <laughs> is <doing what. laughs> like, I'll be like you know what it's all free i'll just install everything and then by the end of it i'm like i have it's no idea the what the, even you know, the game looks like anymore. yeah i but... think the other thing is salary uh, it was salary actually that we could probably discuss as well um oh, I don't know how many so so knowing like what what you're worth when you go into an interview is pretty important. And in that sense, I think a lot of people are kind of nervous to discuss salary with each other or amongst each other. Um, so if if you are looking to get like a new job at a, at a company and maybe you know someone there and they're not comfortable discussing salary, like that's that's totally fine. You don't want to push people to to talk about something they're not comfortable about but you could ask them then if you don't want to directly ask them what they make you could say something like okay what do you feel like do you think do you think this is a fair amount if i ask for that like what what Mm -hmm. range yeah something like that um what like what do you yeah like what range do you think would be a good asking i guess (laughs) yeah and and researching that before you go into like look up online glassdoor and places like that yeah. great Gla- glassdoor is definitely my best friend when trying to figure out salaries yeah i've found this quite representative of yeah. what it actually is but um yeah. on the topic of knowing your worth um like what say you're paid what a, whatever amount you're paid now and you're pretty happy with that you think it's you think it's good and um you interview somewhere else and they give you a much lower salary uh, and they will not give you 
what you want? Like, do you think that that's what you're worth? Are you worth what you're paid now? Or do you think you're worth however much it takes for you to be happy at that place? If that makes any sense. I know it's a weird question. Yeah, that, that one's tough. Um, Cause sometimes, honestly, it's not, sometimes it's not the recruiters fault or anything. It's just budgetary. Like, Oh, we only have like certain amount of money to allocate to like, I don't know, 10 different hires. So that's why, they can only allocate so much money to you or they could only go as high as they can. Um, like, but yeah, if, if they just can't match, like I've had instances where, you know, I interviewed a new place. It's like for a higher position, you know, but I'm still getting like, they still offered me the exact same pay, like to the, to the dollar of what I'm current. I'm like, what's what, what, what is the incentive of like <laughs> going to this new place? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, would you ever take that leap if it's for a game that you love, for example, or do you not want to tarnish the the ideology well, of the game you love? I don't know. It, if it was like a good, if I knew if it was a good opportunity where I would be like growing as an artist and just become becoming a better artist, then I definitely would. That's definitely something I would think about for sure. Like if I wasn't getting the satisfaction at my current job like fulfilling like the art i was creating or I'm, i just felt like i was plateauing on like how much i was learning or how much content i was creating that's definitely something i would think about for sure yeah like i'd say that's something to take into consideration when thinking about like how much you're worth or salary is not only just how much you're gonna make directly like in dollar form but the benefits you'll get from it uh, either as an artist or even the things if they if they provide like retirement benefits or health benefits look into like bonuses if they if they're offering bonuses or or even just the the studio environment um like i know some some studio environments will will take people out for uh, movies and lunches and and do some really fun things like that or uh, project ships they'll they'll bring people on on cruises and things and so even if maybe one job you're making the same exact amount as the other job, maybe one has so many more benefits than another aspect. So yeah, those are outweighs that, it. That's like going back to the interview. That's something else you can you can ask while you're there. Is like uh, what types of things does the studio offer to its employees? Um, yeah, company activities. Like, what do you guys do for holiday parties, etc. Stuff like yeah. that. I don't think anyone's doing I mean, much right now, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not a selling point at all right now. <laughs> I imagine Sony gives games for free, right? At least the Sony exclusives. Yeah. Potentially. Uh, I was kind of curious. Uh, how much do you think your co-workers factor into that then? Like, say you're at a studio where you've got everything you want workflow-wise, you're doing all the art you want, but you just kind of don't get on with everyone else, everyone else, or you get on, but they're not like people that go out of the way to have a good chat like do you, how much does that factor in to that thing man that's that's definitely huge. Uh, yeah yeah it's definitely yeah <laughs> i would say it's huge um <laughs> for a while like i was like i was one of the youngest people at like a lot of the studios i was in so like everyone had like you know like um kids wives were married um they just worked nine to five like it was kind of hard for me to like relate to some people um, so it was definitely tough, but you know, I found my way around like, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think that's a big part of it. It's just the people you work with. Um, mm -hmm. and, and especially your direct manager. I, I mean, that's, that's for me, like the, the biggest thing a lot of the times is, is especially when people quit, it's not necessarily that they're quitting the company as much as they quit management. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a usual narrative, I think. Yeah, like if you don't like the person that you work for, then you're really not going to enjoy your work as much, or you're not going to want to to succeed because you don't want to like I don't know give them the satisfaction, or if it's just a really bad relationship, then there's, yeah, there's that, not as much motivation behind it. That's actually one thing that I do mention in my interview whenever I like talk to like an art director or something. I always mention. You know, I always want to work for someone who will like want to see me grow, not only as an individual, but as an artist, because I've like had managers who like, you know, they don't they don't really care about seeing my growth as an artist, like don't really want to like push the boundaries. Like, you know, I want my manager. I want to be able to like I want to be comfortable enough to just like 
have an open discussion, like bounce ideas off of someone who isn't like stern on their ways kind of thing. Someone who's hard to talk to, or even like, I know some people are like intimidated by their managers or like, you know, just don't want to go up and talk to them at all, which I think is kind of tough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, going back to the, the salary and the interviews and things like that as well. I think something a lot of artists don't know to ask as well that's a possibility is if if they potentially won't like offer as much salary wise there there's always the option you can ask for things like okay would you do like a, a signing bonus then if i'll take a lower yeah. salary could you do yeah. an upfront signing bonus a lot of people don't think to to ask for like i've never asked that actually yeah, yeah smart yeah. yeah that was that was one thing that they like that one time where I got offered the exact same amount, they threw in like, okay, we'll give you a signing bonus. I, like, you know, that's just like an extra incentive for you to jump on. Um, yeah. So definitely something to think about. That's really cool. I didn't even think of that. Never, never crossed my mind. So hopefully help some people. Yeah. yeah. And then um, now, especially with everything going on in uh, like, you know, COVID times and stuff, then if they're not going to offer as high a salary, you can ask things too. Like, would there be the potential for me to work remotely for a portion of the year? Like, could I work, um, you know, if I have family in another state or another country, like, and I don't get to see them very often, but I don't want to take a ton of vacation time every year. Would you allow me to go and work there for like a month? Um, if it, if it's, if we try it and see that it works with the studio and it, it's going well, then like, is that something you consider if I take this like lower salary that you could, you can, you can negotiate not only with money, like there's other things you can negotiate with. Yeah. I think all of that negotiating power comes with experience though, because like in the yeah. past, I was always, I feel like everyone's done it here, but I was always scared to ask for more money and yeah. the risk that I might lose the job. Like how, like how I, are you asking for that? Much? Goodbye. We don't want to, do you know, like, I feel like a lot of people suffer from, from that. So they just take the, whatever's offered to them at the time. Yeah. It, it, it uh, depends too. Like it, a lot of the times if, if you're reaching out to them or they're reaching out to you, how much power you have in that negotiation. Uh, yeah. That's, that's definitely that's a part true. of it. Yeah. Like, um, when when i get reached out by recruiters and then they i like if someone reaches out to me a recruiter and they tell me like oh you have to take an art test i usually say no like you guys came to me like i'm not you guys clearly like mm -hmm. no way i and it, it's like it's happened to me before where i'm like mm -hmm. no i'm not gonna take it and then they're like all right let's get back to you okay you can skip the art test that's fine um but if i apply, if i apply somewhere like I, I totally understand that they want to give me an art test because they, you know, I applied to them as, you know, the reverse is like they coming to me. So I feel like, like Jacob was saying, you feel, I feel like you have a little bit more leeway and power when someone approaches you um, for a job. Um, yeah. So if you've been sharing your work and, and posting a lot and making yourself known, and then you do get those opportunities that someone comes to you, it definitely, puts you in a better position immediately because like okay they've they've seeked that they've taken the time to seek me out yeah yeah sometimes even recruiters like uh usually say hey hey the team um has seen your stuff they they recommended you they recommended that we reach out to you like um so they might already be like you might be known to them already uh, i always tell people when they first ask you like you know what you want to make after you've done your research and after you've talked to the people that you might know in the studio or uh, just asked around a bit that once you actually tell them, okay, this is how much I want to make it. If they actually are going to offer you what you asked for, then you didn't ask for enough. <laughs> yeah. I was, was going to say that if you, I, that's happened to me where like, you know, I, I tell them how much my, I want and they, to the dollar amount, like even the cents, they're like <laughs> if the exact amount you asked for. That's when you know. That's when you know. Like I didn't ask for enough. <laughs> what do you do in that situation? Do, it. Like, do you go back on it? Uh, like, wait, no, I meant this number. You, Sorry. You can, yeah, you, yeah, you can't. You can. I mean, uh, yeah, it, I it's I tricky. Like it yeah. It, yeah, it is tricky. It's definitely tricky. I don't oh, think yeah. you could renegotiate like my cat hit the send button. Like there's no way around it, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I meant to add another zero. Oh, that was a tough one. <laughs> 
there's just no way around it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so that's why it's important to do all that research up front. Know, know what you're worth, know what you're making right now, and then go in confidently asking for this much. And hopefully it's in a good range that maybe you're just, uh, just barely, so, barely over. And then they're like, what if we give you just this little bit less? And you're like, yeah. yes, I asked for enough. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes like they'll ask you via email and I just say like, you know, I just reply with, oh, it's negotiable. And then, cause I rather have the talk in person than have it over email. Like, I just think it's like yeah. a, a better back and forth in person with the recruiter. Yeah. Like what you're looking for than like typing it out and, you know, having that record of like, this is what you asked for in your email. Like, you know, so. So who, who do you prefer fire the first shot? Like, do you want to put the number down first or you want them to offer you something first? I usually want them to offer me something first just to see okay. what they're, I think it gives you a little bit more con- like leeway and just a little bit more control on like, okay, where can you play things from here kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, like so. Back before I was in the game industry, my very first job was actually at, at Best Buy, uh, and I was like selling computers and working on the, on the Geek Squad and stuff like that. And they taught us that while you're going to sell sell computers to people, you never start at at like the the middle computer or the the middle ground priced computer. You you always show them the highest priced one first. So that then as you are going through and talking about the different computers, uh, the highest one is already in their mind is like, oh, shit, I could spend, you know, $2,000. But you're showing me this one and you're telling me it's still like amazing and good. And it's like 1500 or 1400 And that same idea comes into play with, with salary negotiations that if you start off in the middle, you can't go up at that point because now they've already seen this you know, $1,400 computer and they're like, this one's already good enough for me. Why would I spend $2,000 yeah. now? So, yeah. so in that same sense, Analogy. You, you come in hot and say like, okay, this is how much I want to make. And they're like, whoa, that's, that's maybe a bit too high. And then it already automatically starts to sound good when it comes down to closer to, to the numbers that they were considering. Um, so they might be willing to offer you like a little more than their initial thoughts to begin with. Or in that sense, that's when you can come back and say, oh, yeah, what about like signing bonus or um, uh, remote work or things like that? More vacation time. Yeah. Well, actually, See, how everyone do you vacation? negotiate more vacation time in the U.S.? Because obviously the vacation in the U.S. is quite different to a lot of other countries. Um, yeah. Is that something you can just easily go, hey, you want more? Or um it, it's kind of it, i guess it's different some people some studios it's like a flat out like okay we're, we'll give you two weeks for the whole year sometimes it's like accumulated so every paycheck you get a certain amount it gets added but like you there could be situations where like instead of having to wait for that accumulation for those certain hours you can just say like can you fill my pto with this amount of hours like right from the get-go kind of thing oh that's a good idea yeah 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 but the U.S. doesn't do, um, like, in the U.K., for example, we just get, I think, 22 days off automatically mm. or 20 days off automatically. The U.S. is yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we get the U.S. holidays. I know that. Um, Those even are dependent upon the studio, too. Like how, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I know at NVIDIA, um, then for, for time off, technically they say it's unlimited, but it's more than the idea that like it's unlimited as long as you get your work done and your manager. Yeah, yeah. I work. I work at studios where that was like a benefit. Like, oh, we have unlimited PTO. But so at the same time, when they do that, you don't get necessarily as many of the national holidays. Mm. Uh, like, like I know at at Insomniac, I would get you know longer Christmas time and longer time off around Thanksgiving or most all of the the holidays that come on like Mondays and Fridays and stuff. Um, whereas then you don't get that at, yeah. at other places. Um, but then maybe they'll give you more general vacation time that you can choose when to go off. Yeah. I remember when we were at Kojima, like we were getting like holidays based on Japanese holidays. Like we, it was like the most holidays I've ever seen. It was like random, like, Oh, Japan has like a spring holiday this day, you know, that the U S didn't celebrate, but because mm-hmm. we were working for a Japanese based studio, um, they would give us that day. What are some yeah. Japanese holidays? 
It was it was like spring holiday was a random one. Um, it's called Golden uh, Week. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So Golden I, Week. I had never seen that before. Yeah. yeah like a week or so, and so if if no one is working in the Japan studio, and a lot of the people in the American studio were Japanese also, then they just thought, oh, it doesn't make sense to have like ten people come in and yeah. <laughs> no one else is there. Just give everyone a day off. Yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of different countries, have you guys had any experience going uh, between different currencies in salary? Mm, no, me personally, I've, no. I've like talked to different companies about um, the like. I never ended up working in a different country so far, but I had done interviews for a few different ones, um, and the the pay is like definitely different depending on which country you're considering to move to. And everyone always just tells me just stay in the U S like you're never going to be able to make pretty much near the salary that you would if you weren't in the U S which yeah, here U S salaries are pretty decent. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they're nice, I, but you don't have the healthcare yeah. payments and stuff over here. Yeah. true. Yeah. That comes back to like the benefits thing again too, is, is at what point, um is is it okay to forego more salary for the benefits that you get from it yeah one one other weird or like other topic having to do with salaries is like um just the area you live in like sometimes i've heard of friends getting like way offered way less but that's because like the cost of living uh, in certain states is much lower than like, you know, like if you got a job in LA versus like Texas, which cost of living is completely different. So sometimes you think you're getting a low salary, but it's really just based on like, you know, where you live, like, or where the studio is located. Yeah. I mean, it happens here too. Like London salaries are considerably higher than like a... Yeah, it's relative to yeah. how expensive yeah. the area is. So in that same idea, like how, I don't know how much freelancing you guys have done, but how do you go about setting your freelance prices because then so many people might be coming to you from different countries or different places. Like it, at that point, do you allow yourself to make changes based off of where the person is coming to you from? Or do you always set your prices firm no matter who it is? I just have a firm price. Yeah, really? I was, I it, it, firm. If, if someone agrees to the new price, like that I put forward, then okay, that's the new normal, I guess. But then it's it's flexible at the end of the day. If if there's a client that, you know, only wants three, four days work and maybe in the future there's more work, like you you kind of reduce it. As long as you hope that they'll come back. Yeah. But I think Javier's done way more freelance than than I have, but yeah. There's there's also been instances where um like kind of what we were talking about with the salaries, let them throw a number at you first. Um it's a good way, like Hmm. uh, like I had a firm price set in my mind always. And then a freelance company like threw this number at me and I'm like, okay, well that's more than my usual firm price. So that kind of gives me a, a way of knowing like, okay, well this studio has paid me this before. So maybe I should start upping my rate a little bit. Yeah. Like w- would you ever ask for more if you, if you know who's coming to you, like say, say, I don't know, Disney reaches out to you or something to, to do something for a movie or a really big studio comes out, do you just throw your normal number out the door? Like, actually, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I would, uh, yeah, I'd have to see if they threw a number first. Um, sometimes I get asked like, oh, what's your, what's your rate? Sometimes it's like, what's your hourly rate? What's your rate per material? Um, so it, it all varies, really. What's your like day yeah. rate as well, too? And I think if, if someone's referred you for the gig, I'm pretty confident you could ask for more yeah. than your normal rate because you have the, it's like a, a referral for a job at the end of the day. It's, it's pretty much yours as long as you're, like you said earlier, you're not an insane human in person. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think you could charge more if, if someone's recommended you for the gig. Do, do you think there's many things to negotiate, like as many things to negotiate when it comes to freelance. Like uh, I'm on the same side as, as you Kim, where you said that if, if someone's willing to offer you more work uh, for longer periods, then you could potentially take a slightly lower rate. Cause you know, it's going to be consistent. Like, is there anything else similar to that? Yeah. I, I always, I always ask if I could 
put it in my portfolio like even if there's no affiliation like if they want to keep it secret that's fine but like let me post the work because it could lead to more work yeah yeah that's good um otherwise like you said you're not posting anything no one knows yeah. what you're working on anymore you just don't exist anymore so that's something i do i always try and get approval before it's not the end of the world but if they say yes like great like it's another thing i can show if it fits with the what i want to sell myself as if there's if there's like a smaller um indie studio coming to you for work would you ever potentially accept a lower rate if you can negotiate something like uh dual ownership over whatever it is you're creating like say uh say they want mm-hmm. it for a game or they want it for a, a movie or something but uh, they don't have a ton of money and so you're like okay well what if what if you allow me to also sell it again like on my own asset store uh like i'll oh, take 100 percent. yeah straight away i would i would take that <laughs> because you would probably make more money in the long run selling it yeah so then i guess that's that's another way you could do it is that that way you're still getting some sort of base salary off of it knowing that you're gonna make money off of the work but then you can also sell it yourself yeah um yeah definitely i just think it's it's always down to keeping a a friendly relationship with them though if you if you undercut yourself and then a year later they offer you eight months of work like it kind of paid off because you're now getting a a pretty long gig for freelancing at like maybe a a decent rate yeah what 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 do you guys think about like uh selling selling your work like is there certain work that you would just never sell because it's too personal or should you just try to post up everything or like how do you go about determining i have not sold anything but people keep asking <laughs> uh yeah you sell, uh, you sell the materials from the art station oh, yeah, yeah yeah that's because art station asked um but like i haven't i haven't put any of my personal stuff like the the, the bees the the tiki like i just have i don't know is it? Yeah, man. I'll I'll buy it right now. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I, I'm of the opinion that if I'm gonna sell something, I'm gonna start that project with the intention of selling it. Um, that makes I, sense. That makes yeah, because I don't want to sell anything that's sort of too personal to me, like yeah. an art piece that I made to like you know get like I was saying before, like get some feeling or emotion out of there. But if I'm I'm like okay, I'm gonna teach someone to make a, a hump to make a trim, uh, and I can make some money out of that. I just start that that way, really. Yeah. So, is is it with for you, Javier? Is it more you're like worried about? Because I know when I sold a couple of my uh, substance designer things, I'm, I'm I was worried about people actually looking at my graphs because I'm like, okay, maybe the artwork looks good, but they're gonna look at my graph and think. Oh, it's true. No, <laughs> like my graphs are like super like well organized. Like it, it's not. I'm not like nervous about like sharing the workflow or anything it's just i don't know i, I just i don't know if people will buy it um yeah i, I just i don't know <laughs> yeah it, but get, but that is like something i know people are always like worried about like i don't want to share my like you know my secret tips and workflows and stuff like that or sometimes, you know, people follow like <laughs> my secret is I don't have one. <laughs> so, you know, people follow like a, a tutorial or an SBS to the teeth, and like they just post it, you know, and they they just yeah. they don't credit you or something like that. They don't say that you they did your tutorial or something like that. And that's my yeah. biggest worry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not. I guess the only problem is like if, like for example, if you release the tutorial on the bees, like our station will just be full of beehives everywhere yeah. for like well, quite some that, time and there's just an influx of the same thing over and over again that's mm. what i'm seeing with because i i you know i sold the uh i sold the hallway sbs's and you could see on our station learning like i i'm seeing so many more hallways now <laughs> <laughs> luan is gonna kill you dude <laughs> <laughs> he hates hallways <laughs> i think i think over time too because uh I know when I very when I very first did like a uh, either the the forest ground or the forest snow ground tutorial, in, in the beginning, I I started to to notice that a lot where people would would post something like directly matching the tutorial, so you know that they, they they followed it. But becoming comfortable with the fact that you know not everyone is going to credit you for those things, 
and, and it's it's nice and it, i think it's important that that people do it um but it's also like you have to know if you're willing to put yourself out there and you're willing to sell your things or to share your things that not everyone is going to do that um yeah get a credit so yeah. i i used to get really like salty when you know i saw someone do like something similar to mine and i didn't they didn't credit me but like i've gotten to the point where i just i don't really care anymore like yeah. people know it's based off your <laughs> yeah. work now anyway yeah, so yeah. yeah like if you post up artwork and you don't sell it and and there's nothing out there for it and people are recreating it based off of the insp- inspiration and don't credit it like that's still up- upsetting for sure um, but I guess the main point would be that if you are going to sell it and put your thing out there, then there's just, there's just that fact you have to accept it's, it's going to be all over the place and you're not, you're not going to get credit most of the time. Um, and maybe that's just, yeah. is something that you'll become more comfortable with over time and like letting go of that artwork, yeah. just letting it out into the wild. I guess, yeah, does, like, does a problem arise if someone copies it one to one, puts it out, and just like I don't know, gets more not views uh, per se, but like more attention to it than you did, for example? Like, but they didn't credit uh, you, for example. Like, is that a problem? Yeah, then? I don't, I don't know. It's... Well, then they must have done something better. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, like, play. <laughs> so so there's something that they did with that artwork that they changed it to make it their own, and so then that part would be credited to them uh, yeah. and that's where they don't steal but or they don't what if they don't copy but they steal or how's that phrase go you know like the, the... oh uh good no uh good oh, artists yeah. copy great artists steal or something like yeah, that something like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right. i don't know it's just one of those sayings but but yeah and... still have you guys work now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But so in that sense, then they definitely did something better. And so then it's important you go and look at it. Like why why did they get more likes? What what's different about it? Is it just that they happened to post it at a better time, a more relevant time? Or did they actually do something that made it really interesting and like wow, like over push it over the top? Um Yeah. So that's something to consider for for your own artwork, I guess. So if someone does post something up online and doesn't credit someone, um, that kind of feels like a bit of um, a way to where you might, you know, rub some people the wrong way, especially if other people have kind of seen the original or or this kind of thing. But do you think there are other things that some artists do online that um, either on social media or the way they put stuff out or whatever um, that kind of, can come off um, in a negative light and kind of build up a bad reputation for themselves. I I've been seeing this kind of a topic on Twitter recently where like it's kind of how you guys were talking about like you know posting up your personal work, your emotional work on ArtStation, like not really asking for critiques, but someone just comes in on ArtStation and comments like a whole paragraph feedback on what you should have done better with your posts or like what you should have done better with your artwork and. You know, when you post something on ArtStation, you consider it to be, like, finished. Like, you can't really... Mm-hmm. Like, so when someone comes in with, like, a whole paragraph and you didn't even ask for it or anything, can it can be a little upsetting for sure. It happens a lot with guns. guns. <laughs> oh, man. Those hard surface kids. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I was... I, I've actually, like, recently switched uh, on this because before i always thought i had the mindset like okay yeah it's important to 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 help people or to talk to people or to like you know it's a good thing to to better yourself as an artist and to receive critiques and to give critiques but especially with the way art station is almost becoming just most people's portfolios then it's kind of like you're you're shitting all over their yeah. portfolio where people are going to go and see that it's almost like imagine someone's giving them a portfolio review at gdc and you walk up and you're like no that's stupid because of this <laughs> yeah. and that that could yeah. also that could also lead to like you know recruiters are looking at your art station they're looking at your artwork art directors right and then they see a cool piece and then they read the comments and then they see like this huge like feedback thread and they're like oh okay i guess this isn't as good as i thought you know like 
So or it could good be points or good points. Yeah, or, yeah, it could be it could be damaging in some ways for sure. So uh, yeah, I, I'm still on the side of of definitely it's good to continue to better yourself as an artist and to get feedback and give feedback. But uh, in terms of the art station feedback aspect, maybe if you want to give feedback, do it in like a, a private message or, or um, yeah. comment and say like, Hey, I'd love to give you some feedback on this. We'd be open to it. Um, and ask, ask first. Um, just, yeah, just not hey. coming straight out and, and flooding the whole thing. Like with how do you guys, how do you guys take that? Like if you, you know, just randomly got hit up like, Hey, can I give you some feedback on this? Like, even though like, you know, maybe your mindset was just, you didn't want any feedback. You kind of just were doing your own thing. Like it was just more of a relaxing piece. Like, Oh man, if I it's don't know, finished like, work, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Kind of don't want it, right? yeah. yeah. Like if it's finished, you know, like, I, I don't, yeah. I don't know what your guys' mindset. But I will, is. I will interject like it, Depends who's given the feedback. Like if yeah. if the art director at Noi Dog has dropped a book on my art station, like yeah. I'll welcome it because yeah. you know he's worked on on the Last of Us and, and Uncharted. So it's kind of I think it depends who's given the feedback. But it's it's pretty. Sometimes you're caught off guard. Like wow, like I didn't expect that. I just saw a new comment and got excited. Is that like would that be exciting or even more terrifying if it's the you know our director at Naughty Dog like he he shit all over my work? Or well, I guess probably... it depends on how he presented it, right? If it came in and said, "Mate, what are you doing? This is shit. Yeah. You should do this." Or if it went, "Oh, I really love this, and this is really cool. Have you thought about this?" That yeah. could be different, right? At, le- at least at least they're looking at your work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Out there, like if they've left feedback on your work and maybe two months later you've implemented all of it yeah, like yeah. that's be- a, a good selling point yeah and it's it's also the fact that they they yeah not only were they interested enough but it seems like they've taken an interest in you to want you to do better so that's actually yeah. a compliment yeah let's say well, what, what happens in that situation though do you like do the feedback and go like hey i did these things have a look or do you just go like i'll think about it for next next project or whatever i guess that's, it depends if you do it uh i've <laughs> i always say like, because it's because it's finished like i always like oh that's something to think about next time um yeah there are there are very like yeah because once i post like my images i'm not gonna go back and re-render everything <laughs> I'm, just, like, I'm done <laughs> yeah yeah I, th- I think if you do take the time to go back and make those updates and changes um i like i had actually done that before where i i went back and looked at old work and just decided to upgrade it almost um that then you can post that again as like a new piece and link to the old one and and say like hey over time either i receive this feedback oh, yeah. or I've been i went back and looked at it myself that 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 can show that um you're you're thinking and considering about these things to, and, and it also shows like your progress that you've made over time. So that, that can be really good uh, to, to show to yeah, companies or art directors for sure. Yeah, I've been, I've been seeing that trend on ArtStation where someone takes an old material they did like a couple of years ago and then they redo it and they put a side by side of their progression of um, how they've gotten better over time. Yeah. How do so you, I, what do you think of that though? Like redoing some old work? Do you think it's something I've people should do? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's. I think it's a great practice for yourself just to see how much you've changed, how much you've learned over the couple of years. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't find it bad to just redo like some of the work. Like, you could. I mean, it could be the same subject matter. Maybe it's just like a different reference photo you're using this time. So it's not necessarily you're redoing it like one for one. Just getting the point across. I think. Sometimes it's kind of nice too, because maybe if it is difficult to motivate yourself in that time to do like a ton of new personal work, we have to put put in many many hours to start something from scratch. It might just be nice to refresh something that you've already got and see where you can where you can take it. Like maybe you just take a weekend and say, "I'm going to go back to this piece and see with this weekend where where I can get it to now. Now that I know this new trick, this new technique, just to." Just to have some fun with it, and if if it isn't incredibly like amazing that you want to share it or you want to post it, uh, that's fine. But sometimes maybe it'll turn out to be, and maybe it'll be something that actually, yeah, 
garners more attention or, or receives a lot more interest than your first piece. Yeah. Makes sense. I'm going to jump in with a couple of Patreon questions now for you guys. So the first question we have from Sergio, he's asked about how long um, is kind of uh, a good time to wait before contacting HR if you've not got had an answer for a while. So presumably you've applied for a job, they've said, oh, you know, they've got back to you, or you've got the ball rolling, you've, you've had an interview, you've done an art test, whatever, but then, you know, you, you hit that radio silence for a while. Mm-hmm. How long do you kind of wait before you reply, or, or I guess even after you have you have sent them a reply, um, do you send follow-ups if, if they're still not kind of getting back to you? Or I'm, like, the worst with this. I'm so antsy <laughs> and, like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, um, it's it's tough. Like I, I have my fiance telling me like, wait, you gotta wait at least like a week, you know, like because I'm like, I, I need I need him at home now. I need to know. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say like a week, maybe. You know, I usually follow up with like, hey, just checking in. You know, um, is every you know, well, so, nothing going kind of thing. Something you can you can kind of do that isn't necessarily bothersome, but but basically referencing back to like if you had just done an interview if you wait a couple days uh and you don't want to wait necessarily the full week yet you could come in with like um like a check-in that that isn't really a check-in but you're more just saying hey just wanted to say thanks so much for taking the time to to speak with me the other day it was really great to to meet some of the team like i look forward to hearing back from you guys and so that way you're not just like bothering them like hey what's up what's happening yeah. what, you know, like well, but, one yeah. one other thing that could like kind of like the fact I guess it also um, factors in like where you are in the interview process because there are instances where you might be interviewing with multiple people so you kind of do need like a quick response like so like you know maybe you're like you're about to get an offer from another studio and then you know this other one hasn't gotten back to you at all so. Um, something to think about should you just approach them with hey i've got possibly another offer upcoming. yeah yeah like i you know i'm talking to some other people i mean i think that's also something to talk about in during the interview process you know like i'm i'm talking to multiple studios so there's kind of it's kind of time sensitive right now um, yeah or, or in the interview process you could talk to them and say like hey what what timeline are you looking to for someone yeah. to start like how quickly yeah. are we thinking this is going to move along that's definitely one other question I ask. Like at the end of an interview with the recruiter, I'm like, okay, when should I hear back from you? Like, and mm-hmm. if, I don't, if I don't hear back from you, then is it okay to email you? Like, that that should be a good way to determine like when you should email them. Yeah, so, so many times you can really just directly ask them. Like, uh, um, there's there's not a lot of like stupid questions to be honest. Um, just just really straight up yeah like saying when can i hear back or or what's the next steps like that's always a good thing too is like what's the next steps after this what can i expect to to happen like where would we go would there be another interview um am i going to come on site for an interview like uh yeah what's the next step i guess there is no next step (laughs) 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 we're letting you we'll probably squeeze a couple more (laughs) yeah Okay, so the next question um, from Stefan. He's asked about what some of the best questions you've asked yourself or that you have been asked in interviews. Um, any particular standout questions that you can think of? Um, uh, I wouldn't say it was one of the best questions that I've been asked. Or, like, I would say it was definitely a we- like. I'm just going to say the weirdest stuff I've gotten. Is, uh, <laughs> what, was, uh, what, was, what, was my, what was my high school GPA and what I got on my SAT scores? Was, what? Why? <laughs> I, I wish I could. I told them I was honest. I was like, I just bombed my SATs. I bombed them. <laughs> like, and you still yeah. got the job. Right? Yeah, I, yeah, I still got it. I don't, I don't know, man. Weird question. <laughs> That's awesome. Never been asked that before. Yeah. My um, my boss back in Paris used to ask like he'd ask the candidate in six months what won't we like about you oh. and it always 
every single person just botched it like uh, he, it's an awful question to ask. was he was he looking for like a particular answer he just wanted to see like how they would crack under pressure <laughs> i think he just wanted to see how they'd crack yeah. under pressure like yeah. people would say simple things like oh i'm just way too noisy sometimes like yeah. or simple things like that but yeah it's just a pressure thing i guess I've heard of I've heard of people getting asked like oh what came first the chicken or the egg like those kinds of like questions and I think <laughs> I think that I think that goes back to you know Jacob asking like what your superpower is like interesting like questions like that that would make a can you would find out how a candidate reacts kind of thing yeah my yeah. Uh, my art director when we were hiring uh, one of my coworkers uh, had a very key question for him he said all right look <laughs> all, all cards on the table I want you to tell me right now. How you feel about Star Wars: The Last Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, I, "I don't know." Like he was like, "No, listen, just be be honest." And he was oh, like, no. "All right, okay." <laughs> I would have just asked him, "How do you feel about yeah. Star Wars: Last Jedi?" Yeah. Like, let yeah. me know how you feel first. Uh, yeah, I guess that's a good question. Is like, like, uh, at what point is is too honest in an interview? Like, should you always still have that that professional aspect like never let your guard down to the point where you're like talking with a, a friend in an yeah. interview um or or are you just yeah like basically as long as i guess you answer professionally still it it's it's okay to be to be honest um and it comes back to like the constructive criticism thing or or things like that whatever your answer is as long as it's not you being a dick i'm sure it's going to be okay yeah so. i feel like there needs to be a slight looseness to the interview like a bit of a friendliness like, right too. like yeah. Yeah. yeah i mean we are yeah we're, we're making games like it's it's a fun environment like, exactly I think, yeah, I think your coworkers want to know that you're you're chill yeah I've never yeah had, like a tie to an interview or something yeah. but i guess a good question too would be where where do you see yourself in five years or what do you want from your career in five years mm. yeah i got that one it's kind of good to find out if you'll even fit into that company in five years or not then, right? See, I don't even know what I want to do tomorrow, let alone five years down yeah. the line, so yeah. it's a bit tricky. Uh, not here. <laughs> <laughs> if there's, if there's um, like a forum or, or something or that conversation can continue, I could try to go back and um, think more about some of these questions to, to respond to like in the the exp discord or something like mm. that too. yeah you can jump in the exp discord but to be honest i think like we want to bring people back um at some point like we want to get javier with with jonathan i know they want to they want to pie up in the podcast oh so. yeah maybe <laughs> one day and like we want to bring more people in so everyone listening like this we're going to try and bring people back um, i guess jonathan's a popular guy we'll have to do like a round table because yeah, yeah yeah that would be <laughs> awesome yeah, yeah. Well, we keep joking we need like a 10 people round table yeah <laughs> yeah oh man i'll be like a... no one can talk <laughs> yeah, after, mess, after but it'd be COVID, such a good mess we'd have to do that be like, great. in person that'd be great to do in person yeah yeah, that video would be really awesome. like... yeah yeah one day definitely one day yeah, definitely not this year <laughs> <laughs> All right, brilliant. So thank you very much to our wonderful guests for joining us, Jacob and Javier. And thank you to Kem and Luan for being here with me. If you want to learn more about EXP, head on over to the website, read some of the articles, come on down to the Discord to talk to like-minded artists, and tune in next time. Until then, thank you for listening and take care. Bye. Bye. See you, everyone. Take care. See you.